a little bit about uh, this morning, a little bit about EBOS Group, because for a lot of you probably aren't aware of the group, and uh, we are a company that really does fly under the radar on, uh, on most investor screens. And so if I can achieve one thing this morning, if I can increase the awareness of our group to the audience, then that's a, certainly a step in the right direction. And I think when you, we go through the presentation and you see the performance of the company, then uh, hopefully more investors sort of jump on board as well. <coughs> but we're a New Zealand company, um, New Zealand legal entity. We're dual listed on both NZX and ASX. Our market capitalization is now approximately 3.9 billion, that's in Kiwi dollars. We have revenues, last reported full year revenues around about 7 billion. 80% uh, of the group's operations are in healthcare and 20% is in what we call animal care. And as Tim said, 80% of our operations are in Australia. So a lot of the management of the company are Australian based. And we've had a very long record and sound record of delivering successful returns and improved returns to shareholders. So over the last uh, six financial years, our annual return to shareholders has been 18.5%. So when things are going well, the CEO puts up the uh, share price graph. <laughs> when it turns, we pull it out. <laughs> but at the moment, it's on an upward trajectory, so I'm going to put it in and leave it in. But over the last four years, you can see that the share price has gone up 127%. And uh, I'm informed if you compare that, say, to the ASX 100, it's up 19%. For us at EBOS, we certainly have been, uh, we, the company has been performing well, and it was pleased to be, see that being recognised in our share price. What do we do? So we talk about healthcare and we talk about animal care, and really they are the principal segments for the business. And we like both. Uh, particular segments, they have both got good and sound uh, growth characteristics about them. And really, where did the business originate out from in terms of the healthcare uh, business? It really was drug distribution into retail pharmacy and into private and pu public hospitals, and we do that business in both Australia and New Zealand. And that really was the cornerstone of the business when I joined it about 10 years ago uh, as the CFO uh, for Symbian. And we recognised a long time ago, though, that for, in order for the business to be successful, we had to diversify our operations, right? So drug distribution for us and the low margins and the competitiveness of that industry wasn't going to provide our shareholders with the returns uh, that they would expect and wasn't going to provide the group with the growth prospects that we as a management team all desired. So therefore, we went on a path of diversification. And if we look at our healthcare business today, we can split that into four key channels. So community pharmacy with two particular uh, segments there. One is the drug distribution. We have a significant market share in drug distribution in retail pharmacy. We estimate our market share uh, today is around about 40, 45% in terms of that. The next uh, competitor, closest competitor to us would be API around about the 30% mark in terms of their, their market share. Part of that expansion, uh, uh, that I talked about, the diversification I talked about is we started taking about five years ago, we started taking equity positions in retail pharmacy management companies. And the most prominent one of those and the most significant one of those is the Terry White Chemart business. So that Terry White Chemart is one of the leading uh, pharmacy networks in the country uh, by store numbers and also by revenue. And I'd also like to acknowledge, as Tim did, the presence in the room today of one of the original founders, Rhonda White, and also Anthony being here today as great supporters of the EBOS group and great supporters of our business. But we acquired that business and uh, back, we moved to a 50% ownership initially in that business a couple of years ago and then we moved to full control of that business in December of 2018. And it not only that decision not only basically secures our wholesale volumes, but it also provides us growth into the pharmacy channel. At EBOS, we're very positive on the future of pharmacy in this country. So we see the growth of pharmacy in this country as not being dominated or not just solely being the discount channel and the discount players uh, are commanding their share. We see that there are many other players. And as the industry starts to consolidate to the, the major brands like Terry White, Kenmart, we see further growth in those brands and further opportunities in those brands. And that at EBOS, we'd like to think that our ownership of Terry White, Kenmart will be able to capture some of that growth and therefore 
provide a nice return for our shareholders. So that was really the logic of moving into that, uh, that particular market. We also operate uh, within the healthcare, what we call or refer to as the institutional channel. That includes everything from drug distribution to sale of medical consumables, to aged care clinics, GP facilities. We also have a business that provides outsourced pharmacy services into the hospital channel. So what we've tried to do is follow the drug path into where it is touching the community. And if it's providing an opening or an opportunity for us to invest, then over the period of uh, recent years, we've certainly been up for that appetite of investment. I won't talk about, in the interest of time, I won't talk about our contract logistics business. And then we move to sort of consumer brands. And this is where we take actual ownership of the brands. And typically, they're not drugs we're taking ownership of. They're what we refer to as OTC products. But we uh, believe that that provides the group with a nice revenue synergy. We have an expansion, uh, a significant presence in the distribution network into retail pharmacy and also into the grocery channel. And therefore, via the ownership of those brands, uh, we can capture additional margin and additional efficiencies for our particular business. And on that diversification play, we then moved into animal care. And so our animal care business operates uh, numerous uh, uh, parts to it, one being a wholesale services. But the key driver of growth there is two key brands, one being Blackhawk and the other being Vitapet. And Blackhawk today is the leading premium pet food brand with what, within what we refer to as the pet specialty channel. So that's a market that in the premium pet food space, you can't buy that at the grocery stores, you buy it at outlets like a Pet Barn, Pet Stock, and online like Pet Circle, and what we refer to as the premium pet food market. In Australia, that's a market size of about 400 million, and we believe that our, our Blackhawk brand probably has about a 20% share in that particular market. Similarly, we have a very successful pet treats brand called Vitapet. It's the number one brand in pet treats in New Zealand, and it's the number two brand here in Australia. So you can see from this chart and from my description that we are very much a diversified business within those two key channels. We operate basically leading positions. Uh, we're the clear number one pharmaceutical wholesaler across both Australia and New Zealand. In New Zealand, we operate businesses in drug distribution basically has about a 60% market share. And it really is that, that core strength and that market position that really does facilitate the group's expansion and investment into other suitable market adjacencies. I'd also say that we're very good at defending our market shares. We operate in very competitive industries, but our, our competitive position and our uh, efficient operations have allowed us to keep our market shares and defend our market shares so that over time, not uh, over time, they haven't decreased our market shares, they've actually increased over time. Our financial performance, that has been very strong. So you can see here, on this particular slide that we have delivered consistently strong earnings growth and at the same time we've improved our return on capital employed. I think over that period of time, the five years, we've delivered a growth in earnings per share of just under 60%. And pleasingly, from my perspective, being having a finance background, we have improved our return on capital employed from just under 13% to just over 16%. So while we have been a very acquisitive company, we haven't bought profits just for the sake of increasing profits. To us, the two are intrinsically linked. If you're going to buy a business, it had to, has to supplement the group's return on capital. So on that particular slide, if we can keep our, our return on capital employed above 15%, then as a group, we're very happy. Continuing on this theme of investment, you can see that since 2014, we've invested over $600 million, principally on either acquisitions or capital expenditure. Most of our M&A expenditure, though, however, has been on small, medium uh, bolt-on businesses, and they basically just supplement the group's operations in either healthcare or animal care. We have been very active on that particular uh, front. Acquisitions is a key part of the group's strategy. Since 2000, we've completed over 20 acquisitions of businesses. In the first half of 2019, we did investments or acquisitions that totaled some $92 million dollars. We acquired three businesses plus the increase in investment in our shareholding in the Terry White Chemmark Group. Having said that though, we are very patient long-term investors uh, uh, in, in the group. So we're investing for the long term. We only invest in businesses that are going to provide the group with long-term revenue growth and provide the group with that increased return on capital. We're very public about our strategy of acquisitions. 
It goes to the core of our strategy. It's in all of our discussions with analysts and the market. And we say to them that our organic growth in our healthcare business delivers typically about 3%. Organic growth in animal care is a tad over that, about 4 or 5%. We have over the, over the journey though, being able to deliver returns above that. And that's really been where the acquisitions and the supplementing of those additional businesses into our group has assisted in the group's returns. We also pay fully frank dividends uh, for Australian shareholders and our dividend payout ratio is just over the 70% mark. Some of the more recent deals that we have done over the journey and where we have added value to the businesses that we have acquired and the most significant sort of transactions are on this particular slide. So we acquired Blackhawk back in 2014. When we acquired Blackhawk, it had a market share of about 5%. Today, it's got a market share of plus 20%. And as I said, it's the leading premium pet food business in the country. We introduced it into New Zealand in mid-2017. And even though that's a smaller market, it's demonstrating the same uh, growth characteristics as what we have generated and achieved in the Australian marketplace. We acquired Red Seal for about $80 million in FI16. It's part of the consumer brands OTC portfolio. And it basically provides a, a suite of brands that uh, a higher margin for us, and it's certainly an attractive area of investment for us. And that really was the catalyst for our consumer brands portfolio increasing in size to over $100 million. The main products in Red Seal is uh, where it, most of the growth has come from, has been from a natural toothpaste or a fluoride-free toothpaste, uh, which has grown at high single digits in the New Zealand marketplace, has also grown at very strong rates in Asian markets, in, a, in uh, China, South Korea, and even Japan. So we would look to take both the products of Blackhawk and also Red Seal and further expand those overseas market opportunities in the growth of the group. Capital expenditure. So part of the strategy was investing in M&A. The other significant part of the strategy is capital expenditure investment. And over the 10 years, we've basically replaced the our principal distribution facilities on the Australian Eastern Seaboard. It's come at a significant cost, but today we are the lowest cost operator in our industry. And not only does that allow us to capture market share, but it has also, for us, has provided additional capacity to win further business, a la the chemist warehouse contract, which I'll talk about later. Well, I'll talk about now. <laughs> This was a significant contract for our group. They had been with Sigma for 40 years. In early or July 2018, they awarded the contract to our Symbian business. It's about a billion dollar uh, a contract. It's a five year uh, contract. And it really did reflect the fact that because of our capital expenditure program, we were off able to offer them uh, a transaction that was appealing to them and would facilitate their continued growth in the marketplace. That uh, contract commenced operations in early July. Uh, from an operational perspective, that's gone very well. From a financial perspective, we've already told the market that we expect that contract to deliver uh, a returns at least, ex at least uh, equivalent to the group's return on capital of about 15%. We're hoping internally for a little bit higher than that. Uh, but uh, from our business perspective, that went live on the 1st of July. It really was a big bang transition. So our Symbian drug distribution business turns over about $3 billion. From the 1st of July, the volumes in that business go from $3 billion on an annual basis to $4 billion. Uh, pleasingly, uh, from an operational perspective, that's gone without a hitch. So it's a great compliment to our whole team in that, uh, that particular part of our business. And then finally, in early May, we did a capital raising of 175 million Kiwi. That was really to basically continue on the business's strategic direction, continue on the organic growth of the business, continue on the acquisition of pipeline, with, whether that be in healthcare or whether that be in animal care. The acquisition opportunities and the acquisition pipeline for our group continue to be strong, whether that's in pharmacy, whether it's in consumables, whether that's in medical devices and those types of opportunities. So all in all, we see a very positive outlook for the group. We continue to look for those opportunities in Australia and New Zealand that will accentuate and advance the group's returns. And so therefore, from our perspective, from a management perspective, we've got a very positive outlook for the future. <laughs>